Welcome to the Colby Cast, episode 104. Thank you for joining us. The majority of our Colby families call the United States home, but we do have families scattered across the globe. In today's episode, we've managed to solve the time zone puzzle and have the opportunity to speak with Colby moms Ria from the Philippines and Amy in Nigeria. We're happy to have you with us on this world tour of homeschooling. We hope that you enjoy the show. Hi there, I'm Bonnie, liturgical musician, popcorn and podcast fanatic, and Colby homeschooling mom to four lads and lasses of middle and high school age. And this is Stephen, homeschooling father of five and director of development for Colby Academy. edition of the Colby Cast, you get a bonus geography lesson plus an exercise in time zone conversions. Listeners may know that Colby Academy is based in Napa, California, but has enrolled families outside of that geographic region. You may not realize just how far outside, though. Today we're taking quite the field trip to meet Colby moms Amy in Nigeria and Rhea in the Philippines. Hello to you both and welcome to the Colby Cast. Hi. Good evening <laughs> in your area. <laughs> it's uh, good evening in my area. It's good morning in your air- areas. It's right. nice afternoon here in Nigeria. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> right. We've uh, been having lots of fun figuring out what time it is where everyone where everyone is. So we've got it sorted though, and appreciate you guys making this happen for us and we uh, lining this up so that we could all visit yeah. all at the same time. We are really curious to hear about homeschooling with Colby, where you are. So we'd love to get to know you each a bit. Rio, would you tell us about yourself and your family and how you heard about Colby and, and started using it? Oh, sure. So we are located uh, from the Philippines. I have a daughter and we've been with Colby for four years. Um, my husband is working out of town. So it's mostly me and my daughter who's been with home it's been going over with the education stuff here at home and so far she's more on the independent field right now because uh the first year with colby we had a struggle there because of course with my culture with the education system that we have here in the philippines it's quite different from what colby is offering so there was a little bit of adjustment there sure. but you know everything seems to be okay so we just push through and push until we got used to the system and eventually right now she is she isn't coming in a grade seven she's quite independent um with the the curriculum which i'm very proud i'm very proud of that um she would just come in and ask me when she needs me there but what i could say about the colby curriculum it's terrific because in my in my field here in the philippines this the curriculum offers a quite advanced it's quite advanced what we're currently having here in the philippine education system so i am telling my daughter you know what you're so lucky you have this mm-hmm. curriculum already at your stage because i had this when i was like going through college so this is something beneficial for you and this is something that you know you could use later on you have the best of both worlds so she's quite enjoying very much the humanities Mm -hmm. she's very into the humanities she loves because she loves the history so much that sometimes i tend to tell her you might forget your philippine history (laughs) <laughs> don't forget where you're coming from so I do a little bit of mixture from time to time with her so that you know there will be a variety and the roots her roots will still be into perspective there because uh it's very important for me also that she wouldn't you know she would be not be at a miss with her identity as a Filipino mm-hmm. so she also has that on her part, later part in our stage. So that's it. And um, we're just, you know, at this stage with with Colby, I'm quite more on the, a little bit on the relaxed side already. So <laughs> I'm not that with her already. You put in a lot of hard work on that to, to get to a, a stage where, where you're yeah. fostering that independence in her. 
Do you do yeah. mainly homeschool courses or do you do a mix of the homeschool and the online courses or self-paced? It's full homeschool, home, home courses. So that what I like about it, because we are very flexible. Um, the mixture that I do with her is that I try to apply it every time we go out of the house. Mm -hmm. So there are like, for example, there are current issues, current events right now in my country, home country, that I, she's been asking me. She's very inquisitive with that stage. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we argue. <laughs> and we argue one way or <laughs> because she's at that she is at, at at that stage already okay. that she's trying to weigh on things, mm -hmm. trying on the morals and ethics and stuff like that. So we argue at time from time to time. And I always tell her it's healthy to argue mm -hmm. because this is also a way for you to learn at your stage. So I welcome that most of the time with her. But uh, there's also issues that I also tell her about her history, our history, and the Philippine history that is also affecting right now because you know how it is right now. Yes, right after the elections, mm -hmm. there are right now it's a bit chaotic here in, in our country. So okay. she's been asking, she's been asking, and we are, you know, I give her all of these things because I also want her to learn on her own and pick up things sure. on that spot so that. Uh, I tell her learning is not just situated in in books. So you have to also learn outside of the books. Learn from it. And we'll ask. That, that's how I do it with her already, with homeschool. That's why it's very nice. It's very flexible. Because, of course, with my, uh, it, with my schedule as a mom, a full-time mom, and I'm doing a little bit of online job here. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's quite manageable on my end here. Okay. and having no maid <laughs> so that's that's also a breeze for me that's it okay amy would you tell us about your family and how you came to colby sure okay so i'm the wife of a foreign service officer with the state department his job has us moving every two or three years um, oh. so together um, we've lived in oman south africa and nigeria this is our third post altogether. Wow. Um, we have five kids they're 13 9 6 4 and 1. so through colby we're homeschooling our seventh grader our third grader and a kindergartner okay so i I always wanted to homeschool. I felt like I didn't have a very good education. I went to public school. Um, I converted to Catholicism in college. And even before that, I wanted to homeschool. And then I met a lot of friends who were homeschooling, mostly for religious reasons. But um, we ended up sending our son to preschool and kindergarten at our home parish. My husband was in Iraq, and I just kind of needed that social support of having mm -hmm. him in a classroom with, like, sure. you know, a teacher taking care of him, someone else in addition to me and him having other kids because he was the only child at the time. So then we just kind of got used to sending our kids to school. Um, our kids have been to a mixture of, you know, American international schools overseas and um, British kindergartens, things like that. So we're pretty recent, recently started homeschooling. Um, actually, our second child, just for moral reasons, Catholic, you know, we wanted our kids to be surrounded with the faith and not be in a secular environment anymore. And our second child seemed a little more open to the homeschooling thing. So we started with him back when we were in South Africa and then added our middle schooler the following year. So uh, my husband actually found Colby online. He liked the book list. Um, <laughs> and we just kind of rolled with it because we had a couple of... Uh, maybe a couple of weeks left before we had to kind of declare with the embassy what we were planning on doing educationally. So <laughs> it was kind of a, a lot, Colby was kind of a last minute, um, you know, jump right in there kind of a thing. Both of your stories are fascinating to me. And do I understand correctly that both the Philippines and Nigeria are fairly Catholic countries? There is a, a fairly strong Catholic presence in your countries? Yes. Yes, very much. Very much here in the Philippines. There are a lot of Catholics. There are also a lot of Muslims and Protestants. It's a mix here, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So how common is homeschooling where you are, Amy? Is it, do you, have you met several other families who are homeschooling, either with Colby or just in general, or is it not so much? 
Um, I have met one other person, Judy. Um, she's with Colby. Uh, mm -hmm. She's in Nigeria with us, but not in the same living in the same compound. So we see her maybe mm -hmm. once a week or so. And um, I sent an email to the community liaison office over here at the embassy, and they said that there, according to their records, there are eight children who are homeschooled. So between Judy and I, we have five, and then there are three more floating around somewhere. Okay. So. Okay. Um, it's not very, it's not super common because this is a pretty big embassy and there are hundreds of, of people. So hmm. Um, hmm. not here as much. As far as uh, the culture is concerned, I got an uh, article that I didn't get a chance to fully read, um, but it was interesting because um, it had also South Africa. And I do, I did kind of feel like in South Africa, people were a little bit more um, like the pool lady that came to our house to clean our pool, she was all excited that we were homeschooling and said, oh, I have a sister who homeschools. And it was a little bit more in their culture to be more open to that. I felt like they were excited about it. And then maybe in Nigeria, it's not quite as common, but some people are doing it. I think that's the vibe that I'm getting. Okay. At least in the, in the country itself. Among State Department people, we're, we're in the minority. Um, we live in a compound that's right over the wall from the American school next door, and it's real easy for kids just to kind of walk through the gate and go to the go to the school next door. So that's what that's what most of our kids' friends do. Okay, Rhea, I'm hearing more and more about families in the Philippines who are using Colby. It's a growing community there, isn't it? Yes. Have you met several other Colby families there, or is is homeschooling increasing in popularity where you are? Well, here in the Philippines, as I've learned, we are like 12,000 families who are into homeschooling. This is from different providers, of course. Mm -hmm. So with Colby, I've met some already, thankfully, because the first year I haven't, no idea. Yeah. So we, I was just, just trying to wing it then. Sure. And the support, I was thankful for my first year with Colby because of the support that I got from the advisors and the support I also got from parents from around the globe. So I was trying, you know, we had this a little bit of a group. So I was just trying to you know ask them how we're gonna do this things like that so that was the first year it was the struggle the first year but after a while these parents were also the ones who directed me to parents who are situated in the philippines hmm. so that is like wow okay so that is where i started so i began to you know um, chat with these parents. Um, some of these parents is from the Visayan, Visaya region that is like uh, in Cebu. Okay. Some of them would be as far as Davao. So it's scattered, but of course, we're it's still in the Philippines. Here in my area in Metro Manila, I've met three already. Hmm. And it's just so much because of technology right now that we also started a support group here in the Philippines. Oh, good. Because, yeah, as mother, we told her, we, we've been talking about that, you know, you we need some, you know, we need some sort of support that it's, you know, we, we were able to communicate and we can be accessible to anyone. So, yeah. so that's where it quite started then. And uh, since the pandemic, I think I'm very thankful when the pandemic came here because I was already homeschooling. Mm -hmm. So when everybody was shifting gears, Yes. to online learning, shifting gears, to homeschooling, I was like, okay, we did the right thing. Yeah. We did. We are just in the right thing. We did the right thing on the right time. So, you know, it never stopped me from believing that um, because I'm also a product of a Catholic school, a traditional all-girls Catholic school um, growing up from kindergarten to high school. So I always been an advocate for my Religion, for religion, for for religion education, mm -hmm. and I also wanted to impart that same values to my child. So I, I just told her, you know, um, I wouldn't let you go into a traditional old girls Catholic school because I know how it was then, <laughs> but I'll give you a better option. <laughs> and that's what I've been telling her. So that's when <laughs> that's where Colby came in, and I'm just thankful because um, with Colby, it was more at ease especially with the religion 
part i told her this is how it's gonna be this is this is very beautiful the books are amazing mm -hmm. so that's 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 what i'm well i'm more excited than her at the first year because of the <laughs> books <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest with you but after a while she got to appreciate all of these books and then of course she also appreciated the fact that she's also she also has now friends from different cooperatives the same same group actually it's not really the same group but she she's more at friends with older groups okay. that's the beauty of homeschooling you know you you're not just situated with your age group she's with older groups so she's getting a lot of ideas and a lot of things to talk about with me and so that's it um with the when this happened all of this thing happened with the pandemic um there were parents my friends who were traditionally home uh, school they were traditional in a traditional school and they began to chat me they began to message email me oh yeah how 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 what, what do we do with homeschooling what is homeschooling uh, what is it going to be it's going to be like this and so i was like okay so this is how we this is how i do it with my provider so i I was also be the one to research for them. And I tell them, you know, with Colby, this is how I do it. You may want to look for others. But with the situation here in the Philippines, um, homeschooling here is just recently been recognized by our Department of Education. So for the first few, those parents who were homeschooling before, it was harder for them then. So... Um, when you want to trans, uh, transition from homeschooling to, for example, you're going back to your traditional homeschooling, there is another test that you should take just for this uh, public school to test if, you know, you're at that standard, you're within their standard. But of okay. course, we I've heard a lot of news, especially with my friends who are also into Holby, that once they shifted gears or once they, for example, they went to this traditional school, it's always like, with, because they use Colby, they, the children or their child was able to pass or even sometimes surpass the standards. Mm -hmm. So that is how good it is, especially here in our education and system. That is why I'm quite confident with my, uh, with my choice right now, especially that we're facing, of course, since we're going to start with middle school, there's also that inclination that she'll be starting with her high school later for a few more years. So I'm also planning on that one. And I've always been telling her, you know what, you're so lucky because with my during my time, if my parent, if my mother was also given a choice, I'm sure she would do the same. But she, during their time, homeschooling was non-existent in my in my country. So we, I was, we were all in a traditional school, mm -hmm. private school at that. So right now, with the situation. You, you, I'm also getting the quality education that I had when I was still in a Catholic private school. What I'm doing with my daughter right now, the best thing is that I, I was able now to transfer to her the values that I want her to learn. I want her to inherit because when I was in a traditional school, there was already a lot of bullying. Hmm. Um, the reason is also why I shifted to homeschooling is because my daughter was a part, was bullied a lot because she was, she was different. Okay. So she was always the target. Mm -hmm. So I told her, okay, we'll do this. We'll, we'll shift something. We'll change something. So I took a research. I made a research and I found out about Colby. And I also asked some of my uh, family members in the states about Colby and stuff because they've heard about because I know in the in the states it's very prominent uh, about homeschooling so I just started to research and decided there and forth that I'm gonna take Colby regardless of whatever it's gonna be it's like a leap of faith for me it's really a leap of faith so I'm glad I did that too because right now I'm seeing the effects with my daughter the difference from if I'm going to let her stay in a traditional school and then the pandemic happened, how hard it is, especially in my home country where we are not that uh, technology uh, knowledgeable. We are not, you don't have the right facilities yet in terms of, you know, advancement in technology. So I'm quite glad that we did this earlier. So at least 
when all of this stuff happened, everything was like, okay, we're here. We're going to do this. <laughs> yeah, I had a similar situation where I decide, we decided to start homeschooling um, the school year before COVID hit. And we were already in that mode. And, you know, I was still in the WhatsApp groups with some of the parents from my son's kindergarten because I wanted him to still like get invited to birthday parties and things like mm -hmm. that. And they were, they were like, this, this online school is so hard. Like, what am I doing? You know, and I realized my kid doesn't know how to read. And I thought she did. And I was just like, man, I'm glad I'm not really part of that anymore. And we're just you know, getting our feet on the ground with homeschooling already. So <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't have foreseen that, but wow. What a, so thankful I have a similar, yes. Amy, do your children do all homeschool or do they do a mix of homeschool and online? How does that work for you guys? We do all homeschool, okay. um, considering doing online with, um, my oldest at some point, um, but our school year has started and ended at odd times. So Mm -hmm. And we're not necessarily starting in like August and ending in May or June <laughs> all the time <laughs> with all of our moves and new babies and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't had a chance to. It's probably nice as far as continuity as well for you, Amy. As right. well. If you're moving from, at least you don't have to kind of jump into new schools and learn new teachers and new. It is. And when, yeah, before we started homeschooling with Colby, I did some preschool just learning goals thing with our second child who was, um, he started at a British International Kindergarten and then we had a medevac um, to have a baby and then we were going to be moving from Oman to South Africa. And I was just like, you know what, I don't want him to get used to his kindergarten level two in Oman and then have to move to South Africa and get used to another kindergarten. And so I was just like, I'm just going to homeschool him for this year. And then he did go to a kindergarten, but at least he didn't have that extra shift in between. So it definitely provides continuity with all of the transitions. That uh, we've heard that come up a couple of times about uh, military families who mm -hmm. who homeschool and they they can for for that reason largely that it that is one less um, change that they have to navigate. Yeah. How living where you do? How do you? We'll start with you, Ria. How do you approach the uh, Western Eastern dynamics of the Colby curriculum when living where you do in the Eastern Hemisphere? Has that is that much of an issue for you or not so much? Not so much with us because in our household, I mean, our first language, though we are Filipino by birth and everything, but my, we were mostly more fluent with the English language. I think because of the influence of American stuff, Western culture is very big here in the Philippines. Okay. And uh, ever since my child was born, she was, well, TV itself is already in English. So that was not an adjustment for her. She gets to learn all of this cool American culture, Western culture from television and stuff. The struggle there was when I have to reintroduce to her her roots. Yeah. Um, for example, um, her elective language is in Filipino. So she was having a little bit of a struggle understanding certain words, understanding certain gra grammatical rules in our traditional language so I made it easier for her so what I did is that I became an active catechist in our local parish and every time I have like a seminar for baptism those who would want to have confirmation you know the pre-seminar uh, requirement she would tag along with me oh. and then I would let her play with the children in the church so she gets to communicate with them in the local language. And, you know, she gets this, the feel of the culture itself, that this is how it's going to be. This is how they play. This is how they talk. This is how they argue. And eventually she got the hang of it. And um, right now, though there is still a struggle in learning the language, but she's more a little bit more at ease in terms of communication in speaking the language. So for example, when she goes to the local store, she can ask uh, if she can buy a certain item 
in the local language already because before it was so hard people here would try to laugh at her that is also the reason why she was mostly bullied because she could not at least speak the local language though <laughs> she's a filipino but you know she's that's that's because that's how we were here in in our household english is the first and foremost language so the transition was quite hard so that's what i did for her to uh, be able to communicate to be able to be more open to the environment outside of our home um, i always tell her this you should learn the word we have a filipino word what we call pakikisama so I tell her uh, the pakikisama means that you have to be able to learn how to be with others. You have to, if you need to bend, if you need to sit down with them, just go with them because that's how it's it going to be. You know, it's not always me. It's not always your dad. It's not always your cousin. You get to have these dynamics with all of these kind people, all different personalities. You get to know that. And you have to learn the language because it's so hard if you don't know, learn the language here. Um, and well, she experienced that already at first hand. But right now she is, she has, I'm thankful that she has friends from the church also that is also helping her cope up with some stuff, especially now she's going to, she's in the range of being a teenager herself. So at least she has that support group already from the local community. And then also the language there that is improving though it's not yet perfect but yeah. at least she's able to talk she's able to express herself more freely to individuals especially you know in in buying stuff in riding or uh, in uh, in riding public uh, transportation she be able to do that already on her own she knows already yeah. that so that is a, quite a big uh, thing also for her her confidence in confidence in you know these skills little skills that sometimes we tend to forget but for yeah. me you know it for her also it's it's an achievement already it's a small victory so i always tell her you know you may not be the wisest you may not be the most intelligent person in the world but the things that you're learning the things that you're gaining day to day these are what we call the small victories in life which later on will be big victories for you when you become an adult yes that's it so true. so true what about for you amy where you are in nigeria is what's it like for you so i think every country we've been in has been pretty um have a lot of western influence um when we went to oman i worked really hard to learn a little bit of arabic and i i mean i kind of needed it a little bit for reading some maps but mostly people spoke english and um the big thing i i was thinking about when i heard about this question um, was that I know that in Oman, a lot of parents were kind of trying to organize learning American history because in the American schools internationally, they don't teach American history. Hmm. Hmm. And so we already got um, some American history for our oldest son, the same one that Colby uses. Interesting. And yeah, um, but I mean, we've always been kind of in West, sort of westernized countries anyway with you living on the compound, as you describe, it sounds like it is, um, do you spend most of your time there or are you more out where you would be, where this would be more of a factor for you? Does it depend on where you're posted? So yeah, it kind of depends on where we're posted. Um, in um, Oman and South Africa, we were kind of able to go wherever, you know, we pleased. We could go on long, long weekends and travel around and explore a little bit more. I guess as far as having a totally different culture is concerned, Oman was was definitely different. So, um, but here in Nigeria, we do spend a lot of time on the compound. Um, we're not really allowed to go past a certain point in the city of Abuja because of issues with safety. So, um, we don't we don't get out a whole lot here. <laughs> um, we do go to we do go to mass every Sunday in a local local church and kind of get to know people a little bit there. Yeah, I know I had been working with some with families in in the UK and uh, in Ireland, and their homeschooling was certainly something frowned upon. I mean, they wanted the kids to be in the get the state curriculum and um, so they were, they were kind of pushed to go to a school like Colby 
to get that U.S. sort of transcript or stamp saying, is, if you experienced some of that in, in well, either the countries you've been in or, or in the Philippines, I guess, where it sounds like the Philippines has now embraced homeschooling to some extent. Uh, yes, um, here in the Philippines, um, homeschooling is quite new still. Uh, for example, since I'm taking up Colby, uh, there are schools that would allow me to go directly with the with our transcript in Colby. But there are still a majority of schools that would require me to take her for additional testing so that they can just be assured that she is at that standard of a certain school. So that is also the thing that I've I think I've heard about from the homeschooling communities here that they would like to um, at least pass a new policy uh, with the Department of Education here in, in the Philippines so that at least this uh, transcript of records coming from abroad, uh, they would be also be duly recognized here in, in our home country. Because I had uh, mothers who would talk to me like, for example, they had this home school provider abroad and then they want to go to a local university here in the Philippines. Um, they have to get the certain like a red ribbon, all of this thing so that it would be certified and then take another admission test and all of these things. So there have been some talks already from the homeschool communities that we, at least we would like to start standardize these things, especially when you have to uh, transfer or at least uh, you want to level your child to, you know, to the local schools here so that it would be recognized and you would be able to, to have that fluid transition. Because I do understand also the, the frustration, especially with uh, the department, with our local uh, offices here, and also with with us as parents, you know, we, we wanted to have the best education. That's why we homeschooled our children. But if it's going to be like a lot of battalion of certification, a lot of battalion of standardized testing. So like, what, what, what is this all about? I mean, this is sure. quite frustrating on our end too. Mm -hmm. So that is why I, that is what I've heard because I also get updates from, from our homeschool uh, communities here about, uh, that is why I've learned, that is recently that I've learned that, that we have already been recognized by the Department of Education here in the Philippines about homeschooling. Because when I started uh, with my daughter, it was so hard then. Um, so I'm glad also that some of the parents homeschooling here, local homeschoolers here, the parents here are also picking up the thread of uh, this policy so that, you know, later on, we're hoping that uh, we'll be fully recognized here, that this is also a way of an alternative education system for, you know, for most, uh, for the children also, because uh, especially right now that we're still, actually, we're still not out of the pandemic, so to speak. We're still in the pandemic. So homeschooling is the best option so that you could have the quality education and, you know, the tradition, that transition of values is much better than the public school system. Right. So my husband also um, grew up in, you know, Catholic school, private, all boys, high school. And he was he I think he kind of thought my wanting to homeschool out of rebellion against the public school system was kind of weird. He thought, you know, mm -hmm. I was fine in Catholic school. So, you know, it's fine. So when I, you know, in kindergarten, when it came time for our son to go to, well, it was preschool, actually. Um, but, you know, I just didn't really fight with them because I you know, was overwhelmed. I was like, okay, he can just go to school. That's fine. Um, but um, I think with Colby, I think that one of the things that attracted my husband to the Colby curriculum was that there are those transcripts. You submit the grades and you have academic advisors and all of that. So yes. someone who was used to, you know, and supportive of like a brick and mortar type of school and used to that traditional system wasn't quite as uncomfortable with the idea of homeschooling so um i think that was a selling point for him um and i was just happy that he was suggesting and going along with homeschooling so i said okay um and another thing is that 
with us, I feel like we're not really, we're a little bit um, bubbled off from the local rules about homeschooling because we work for the government, we work for the embassies. So um, however it goes in the U.S. is is pretty much what we can follow. So we're pretty free to to homeschool without a whole lot of um, argument. Um, I will say I found an article from our the family liaison office um, with the State Department. It's kind of an old article, but it kind of just assumes that people are only homeschooling because they were sent to, you know, an out there country that doesn't have a good school system. So that's why they do it. And so I think there's kind of probably an idea that, you know, it's not the ideal to homeschool, but if you end up in a country where the schools aren't good, you do it for a couple of years and then, yes. you know, your kid can go back to school kind of a thing. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure how many, how much like people who really just want to homeschool from the beginning are, you know, I think that's probably in the minority. Interesting to see how that changes here in, after the past couple of years. How, yeah. How these attitudes <laughs> come around. Yeah, um, that's true too. So where you are, do you incorporate more local saint stories or literature into your studies, or do you find the Colby curriculum casts a broad net already? When we were living in South Africa, um, we were able to go to um, the tomb of Blessed Benedict Daswa, mm -hmm. um, which was really a neat, a neat trip. Um, and it was right near um, one of the entrances to Kruger. So we kind of, you know, went on a nice, long, big field trip and um we're wow. able to uh yeah to visit a nice shrine of local local uh, blessed so it's neat to be able to find those little things and go on adventures like that mm -hmm. what about you Rhea, with your local saints Oh, we have a few local saints that I've already lectured my daughter because <laughs> since I'm part of the cat, uh, catechism team here in our parish, so she would come with me with the, with my lecturer. So she's just like, "Mom, mm -hmm. I know him already." Yes, mom. So she's like that. So um, there, are, I also try to incorporate uh, what the Colby curriculum with in regards of the saints so that you know she get to know all of these things mm -hmm. and get updates uh, with the beatification of newer ones and stuff so I even tell her how the process of this uh, investigation to be a saint so yeah. that she would try to understand on that part so she she'll be obviously telling me mom I don't need you to lecture me because you've been lecturing these children and I'm with the children already. So I, I, I'm educated on the, the local <laughs> saints already. So I would like to know more about the different saints right now. So we're trying now to focus on the more of the Western saints because uh, she's much more um, interested with this, with these people. So I, uh, with the saints, when I do the saints with her, especially when we were talking about the local, we tried to visit the place itself here in the Philippines. Uh, with one of the saints, uh, we went to Binondo because uh, the story there is that with uh, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, he was like uh, an altar boy and the church where he served is located there. So mm. we made a field trip there. And we, we were able, and I also tried to lecture her about the structure of the church during the time because it's very different right now how the church would be structured, you know, the bell towers, all of these architectural things. I try to tell her about it just to give her a sense of history during that time. And she quite understands the influence of the Spanish in our country and how. Uh, she got already. She already gets the idea of the good points and the bad points of what happened in terms of history here with the with, under the Spanish colony when we were still in a Spanish colony and with the saint that came in at uh, Lorenzo Ruiz, uh, how they went to Japan and stuff like that. So you know these things, I get to be you know much more uh, hands on with her. Because if it is, I, I would try also to research on my end. If it is nearby my city, then we'll go. Because I think it would, for her, it would, she would be able to appreciate the saint itself if we are on that site. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, at least she gets the feel of it. 
Uh, so I always tell her this: the saints are also people. They're also like us. They were at times they were also bad, like us. But these are the things that made them saint. <laughs> so you yeah, try to incorporate this with her. So I think she appreciates that, and she gets to learn that um, day by day, uh, even with her faith, how she applies this. Uh, she would always tell me right now she's been telling me mom I may be you know I may not follow you most of the time but you know how the saints were sometimes they were not following Christ also but look at them now <laughs> she would always tell me that I'll have to look into both of those that you mentioned both of you as, as we're chatting here and you're talking about your experiences being homeschooling mothers and and I'm relating it back to mine it just seems in the context of the church to me it's just like pulling this in so t- I, I, I'll have a hard time explaining this but pulling in so tightly that I mean because as a mother you, of course you are the best suited to to uh, mm-hmm. to educate your children but it just seems like rather than have like these state governments tell us here's what your children ought to learn it's like the church is growing because you're a you're you're teaching your children you're you're able to be involved in their lives in a way that's kind of continuing the, growing the church in this very natural organic level it's just so i'm just, i don't i don't know why this is but it's just like wow this is really great that this is happening all over the world that you, no matter where you are this can happen it's yeah. exciting to me i don't know <laughs> it is it's wonderful to see well, as we noted at the beginning of the episode, we are recording this where, where Stephen and I are. It's early morning, it's mid-afternoon for Amy and evening for Rhea. So let's talk about some practical dimensions of homeschooling with Colby when you are not in the United States. I'm, and I, even our families living in the United States deal with the time differences. We get exercises in time zone navigation all the time, but this is a <laughs> next level time zone stuff. So how do you navigate these time differences for for interactions with the Colby advisors and administrative staff, how does that go for you? I have had no problem um, doing the online live chats when I have a question, um, oh, sending emails. Um, before we started going overseas for the first time, I purchased a Skype number at someone's advice and hmm. it's a US number. Anybody can call it from anywhere, landline, cell phone, anywhere. Oh. And I, I have a US area code and it rings on an app on my phone if I'm connected to the internet here. And I've had no problem receiving phone calls from people that's happened maybe one or two times from advisors or um, the bookstore. Nancy, who's really great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. That's right. She's got quite the fan club. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So the, I have had no problem communicating. Like I said before, it's been fine. Thanks to the internet. Good. Yes. How about for you, Maria, where the time difference is more pronounced, it's quite, it's quite a lot for you. Um, it, with me here, I have also no problem. Uh, email works best for me. Um, in terms of with my advisors, uh, usually I would give them like point by point questions. Yeah. And then at least I, I get answers straight, how I'm going to do this and all of those stuff. Um, I find the advisors very accommodating. I mean, I have to appreciate them because of the time zone difference. I mean, they're able to at least give me an answer within 24 hours. And then, yeah. And then, of course, I've mentioned, as Amy mentioned here about Nancy in the bookstore. Hmm. Terrific. I mean, you know, having somebody from the other side of the world and taking in charge of what books, everything, the materials and stuff. It's a huge, huge relief for me, Uh, especially, you know, there are things that I'm not yet that familiar, especially now that we're going through the middle school um, stages already. So it would be Nancy would be the best point person for me to tell me, okay, this book is like this, this book is gonna be okay. I would be able to decide on that spot, yeah. which one I'm going to get, which one it's not going to be, you know, something like that. So it, the staff, everybody has been so accommodating, so friendly. And that is what I've been telling my husband also that, you know, having this kind of a support group, a support a provider who is this supportive is like winning a lottery <laughs> for me it's like really winning a lottery i'm really appreciative of that of that effort really i am 
I've heard really good things about Nancy as far as being able to help with the books because I've yeah. seen some of those yeah. overseas shipping charges. And for me, it would just be, I mean, that would be a stressful thing trying to get your book order together. It's like, oh, please, I can't, if I can't miss anything. I'm going to have to pay another one of those huge shipping charges. But yeah, yes, true, true. So one thing about our situation um, is that we do have a U.S. address and we have the diplomatic pouch. And so what happens is I just plug in that US, US address I can order from anywhere. It just takes two to three weeks instead of two to three days to get here from Amazon. But my husband just picks the stuff up in the mail room at the embassy and it's no big deal. It's not, um, it's not a huge issue as if we were, I think people who are living, actually living in the country overseas, like people who have a, a job outside of you know the, the embassy that, that we have supporting us probably have a little bit of a tougher time with shipping things. Um, it's pretty straightforward and easy for us. That's good. That would be yet another thing to put on the list to factor in how much time it's going to take to get your books to you when you need yes. to place the order. And yes, and I can definitely relate to the making that pressure of get everything in this order. So cause I know I've had my oopsie orders, you know, that I place those. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that um, is, uh... yeah, speaking of oopsie orders, I, <laughs> when we first moved to Nigeria, I ordered a few books. Thankfully, it wasn't all of them, um, but I accidentally forgot to change the saved address in the bookstore website and they got sent to the embassy in South Africa when we were actually oh, living no. in Nigeria. Oh. I realized it after I ordered it, but it was, it was too late. Um, so I, I just ended up ordering some things on Amazon and we have some extra books for younger kids now. Um, but yeah, I, that would be my advice for practical shipping things for people is just check your saved addresses. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually accidentally had pizza delivered to the wrong places too. Oh, no. being from, you know, moving from hotel to hotel to Airbnb to hotel back on, you know, maternity medevacs and stuff. If you live that kind of a lifestyle and you have all of these apps and online things to make things yeah. easier, sometimes uh, things fall through the cracks. So just oh, double no. check your addresses. <laughs> Great suggestion. Yes. <laughs> Well, do you have any other words of wisdom that you'd pass along to Colby families living either in the U.S. or abroad? I guess I would say um, you don't have to follow the traditional timing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, when we were in, um, in South Africa, we were kind of stuck there because of COVID. We didn't know when we would be able to move. We were locked down anyway. And we were just like, you know what? We're going to just start the 2020-21 school year in June and get a quarter mm -hmm. under our belts before we have to move. Um, and we're really glad that we did that and we were able to finish the school year um, by the time our baby was born in April. Um, and now this school year, we had to start later um, because you know I was still back in the US, um, stuck because of a surgery I had to have and then delays with our baby's visa. And um, we're gonna be finishing up July 1st with our, with our curriculum here. So. I have also um, just kind of last year, I waited until July and submitted all of the grades from all of the quarters. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but it's, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so if your life is really crazy, there are workarounds and you can, you can get through. And um, the advisors have been pretty flexible with me on that. I feel like I'm always telling some kind of story <laughs> about why I'm submitting all of the quarters at once, three months late, and then turning around the next day and, and enrolling for the next school year. Um, but yeah, you can do, you can do things differently. You're so. not alone. So. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, yeah. The first or the last to do that. Right. <laughs> That's a good point, though, the flexibility of the timing where you can yes. set your set your school start date when you need it to be. And and then as life happens, you can adjust it how it needs to be. I've also done a few five day weeks instead of four day weeks, quite a few five day yeah. weeks so that we can finish like a month earlier mm -hmm. instead of just having four days of work. And then the fifth day be kind of like a half day for catch up or field trips or something. Mm -hmm. We just kind of work straight through and then we have a little bit more time to work with later mm -hmm. um, for whatever week long trip we happen to have or just needing to be done 
by a deadline like a baby's due date or something like that. There's flexibility there. That is embracing the fifth day, right? Definitely. <laughs> Planning ahead, <laughs> embracing yeah. it. Yep. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to? Um, I would agree with the flexibility of dates because here in the Philippines, we are so used to the June, March calendar, school calendar. So when we started Colby, I told my daughter, okay, we don't need to start in June. So we'll just wait for the books to come in because usually the books would come in. Well, the first year was a struggle because the books came in after a month. So I told her, you don't have to worry because, uh, you know, you're so used that you have to start on June and June. But I told her, no, no, no. You just have, we're going to have our own calendar. Don't you, don't you like that? <laughs> we're going to have our own time. We're going to have these things. We're going to fix it up on our own, you know, dates. Sure. So um, eventually we, she got the use of it. So we're used to, you know, we don't have to start in June. Sometimes we start on August, we start at September, we start sometimes at late as December, and then we'll just finish up on her facing. Uh, we use also the four day thing, uh, four day schedule with her. The fifth day is usually for the catch up, but sometimes she does, uh, the fifth day becomes another lesson for her because she feels like she needs to, you know, be more intense with some of the subjects with her age. So she uses that one. And I even use sometimes the week weekends for her literature. So I tell her, oh, if you want to do advanced reading with your literature, use the Saturdays or the Sundays when you have this vacant time instead of, you know, doing video games or what, you yeah. know, at least from this moment, she's learning how to manage her time. That is very important also for her. Mm -hmm. And then she has a whole week to plan ahead her day, her, her schedule. So when we were started with Colby, uh, it was more on me planning this for her. But mm -hmm. after a while, so she has this way of planning already, which one she's going to do first, which one she's going to be this and that. But, and I will tell her, you know, this year, since she's uh, finished with her sixth grade, I started giving her deadlines. It's just for her to understand the concept of deadlines. Mm -hmm. So for example, with her literature, okay, you have to give me your summary or something by this day. So let's plan. You have to plan what you're going to do. You're going to do. If she wasn't able to do it, and I would tell her, okay, you know, okay, do it on this day, but you have to finish it. No more extensions. So she gets a real time scenario right now. And I'm trying to practice that with her already because I also want her to learn how to manage her time in a real setup, real setting. Because I've been, well, I've been telling her this, you know, when you are going to be in college later on in your life, you won't have one week of just one paper yeah. topic to do. Right. You should learn how to manage this very well with all the activities that you're going to do later on in your life. So this is also a life lesson for you one way or another. So she gets that. And though she there is a struggle with her, with her time shifting and time thing, I let her commit these mistakes also. Because for me, that is a very important lesson for her to understand and for her to learn that, you know, if you didn't do it, didn't pass it, then there's a like a, a little bit of consequences on this action. Mm -hmm. So we will be delayed in taking up another topic, things like that. So things like that. I would like also to emphasize the beauty of the support group, um, especially with uh, with my situation here, where in our curriculum is quite different from what. Colby's offering from the from the books and everything it's so nice to have parents who's also into Colby and be able to help me with some of the topics on how you would fully discuss it because um, there are some topics with with the curriculum that is quite for me because we took this when I was in college already so taking that topic on her age I have to put a little bit, I have to level it down to her. 
So it's so nice sometimes that we have parents here who would be so kind enough to have this big lecture with a certain topic. And so they be able to teach it to the children of the same age level or, or even at the same age level with the same topic. So that is something for me to be appreciative about with the local parents here in, in the Philippines using the Colby. So we try to do what we call team teaching. So there are like subjects or topics that we need to, if we can teach it, then we be able to volunteer. Other than that, there are some parents who are good with certain topics, especially with this, uh, when you're doing a full homeschool, you also need that push with some of the topics. So that is very beneficial with my daughter, uh, not to mention that she gets to see some of her peers also, even if it's just a Zoom meeting, which is very important right now also with her age. So it's very important on that part, the support system. And uh, of course, uh, the prayers that we do this everything in all of his glory i always emphasize that with my daughter that everything that we study everything that we do we thankful we are thankful for the lord for everything here so that's it absolutely so your support group it's a facebook support group that like a, a facebook group that you formed for the colby the Col families in the yes. philippines right and then you yes, all meet by yes. zoom or do you meet in, in person also um, if we're near the, uh, for example, if you're near Metro Manila, we try to meet somewhere okay. if we're able, okay. if we're allowed to because of the COVID thing, sure, sure. but most, but most of it, we're, we're doing it, Google meet, we're doing it virtually. Okay. So that's to be safe. And, you know, it's more practical. We just have to talk about the time mm -hmm. and when it will be much easier for the parent to teach so that the, you know, the kids can come in and, you know, share, share these things. Okay. Wonderful that, that you have that, that Facebook group for your country. And then the mm -hmm. class groups also are, are yes. helpful, I think, for people connecting. It's, yes. it's always neat to see uh, where people are yes. when they, you know, wherever they live around the world. So those true, groups true. are uh, big, have been a big help to a lot of folks. Um, so speaking of help, uh, I think that it was hard for me at first adjusting at the beginning of living overseas, but having domestic help out here is um, it's very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I started out very, very part time with someone. And this is the first post I've been at where I've had someone full time. Yeah. And our assistant actually has her, her bachelor's degree in early, ed early childhood education or elementary education, sorry, from in Nigeria. And she helps out a lot both with just getting the dishes done and also um, we don't have dishwashers here. Um, and also with um, just teaching our little kids how to read and write and do numbers. And she's really great with that, with our kindergartner. She does a lot of the work. So that's, that's really nice. Another thing that I've kind of learned and that makes me a little bit more comfortable um, with all the unknowns in life is just planning ahead and having like I'll go through the course plans and I will make a chart weekly you know week by week for the whole quarter and just type up for every subject for each child what mm -hmm. is going to be due that week and then I can use that um, to cut and paste into the next week's plan um, and just have it all right in front of me in one document instead of like paging through, through all the 100 page you know um, uh, course plans. Yeah. Um, it kind of just adds some st stability and clarity so that if something happens, if, you know, three or four things are broken down in the house and I have to answer the doorbell when all these maintenance guys are coming, or if somebody gets sick and I have to take them to the embassy to go to the health unit, somebody can just step in like our assistant and help the, the older kids just still get their work done if something else is going on unexpected. Mm -hmm. So I have their whole quarter weekly plans, like, like just taped to the wall right at their desks and they can see everything that's going to be expected of them the whole quarter. And it's um, a lot less flying by the seat of our pants that way. And a lot is a lot more stability for us. So that's something that's worth putting the effort in doing your, you know, pre quarter, you know, these are all the assignments. I try to have the next week's assignments all laid out by Friday so I don't have to worry about it over the weekend. I'm just kind of having everything right there in a chart. Right now I'm doing all of that work. I suppose my oldest son in the next couple of years could probably do that on his own. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, and it's, that's a really, a really helpful thing that I've, that I've learned. That's a great suggestion. Help everybody know what's going on and take that on eventually when they're ready to. Yep. What a delight it's been spending this time with you all. Thank you again for coming to visit with us and, and sharing your experiences with us. Please do keep in touch and we hope the best for you and your families as your, as your school years continue on into the future. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe to the Colby cast on your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss an episode and let us know how we're doing by leaving a rating or review. And as always, feel free to email us at podcast at colby.org. Mary, our mother, pray for us. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us. Ad maiorem Dei Gloriam.